Um, so I'm gonna do the recap. And it's kind of long. So, uh, previously, our story began with none other than the infamous Zatari, treasurer of the Thieves' Guild, and one of the few who ever scored big and lived to tell about it. Now, Zatari mostly does paperwork in her plush office. Unfortunately, there are days where she must oversee last will and testaments from guild members. This brings Sydney Nimblewood into her celestial quarters, a lone wolf who did some adventuring a few years ago, but after her party disbanded, she mostly lost touch with them. She was close with a tiefling named Brahiri, who had met her untimely demise, and before the guild begins investigating, they must assure her affairs are in order. Sydney is given Brahiri's beloved companion, a rather large raven named Pickles, along with 300 gold for his upkeep, as well as last wishes for Sydney to join an adventuring party and ultimately avenge her death if she died due to foul play. Zatari had recently taken a newcomer under her wing, a striking satyr named Sienna, with a proclivity for sweets, especially pie. After finding Sienna in the mess hall, Zatari invites their final party member, a trickery, a trickery cleric named Gemma, into the fold. The next morning, your party gathers outside the guild hall where Zatari welcomes you with muffins and a beautiful caravan drawn by a red Shetland pony named Delphi. You're worried that it may be a bit small on the inside to accommodate all of you, but to your surprise, the inside of the caravan is beautifully spacious and wonderfully decorated. As Zatari begins outfitting the party with various cloaks, she notices Sydney smiling to herself for a moment, and Zatari remembers how when she first met Sydney, she was surprised by her sullen demeanor, as Brahiri had quite the reputation as a fun and jovial individual. As you reach the outer city, you find a barn to hide your own caravan and Delphi behind. You're, you bribe the farmer to allow you to park there for five gold, and you enter the woods around dusk. Sienna and Sydney quickly hide themselves within the trees, while Zatari and Gemma get ready to begin their plan to pretend to throw themselves in front of the carriage. Pickles assists you, and in perfect tandem flies in front of the carriage, spooking the horses, while Zatari drops to the ground screaming. Gemma and Satari are very distracting, and the driver is completely focused on them, while Sienna and Sydney sneak around the back. Inside, they see a few oil paintings, as well as a crate of bottles, and a few trunks. And as you begin to steal stuff, you notice a bit of blood on the ground leading to a locked crate. Sydney unlocks the crate, and to your shock, finds a portly man with a nasty head injury and a lavish outfit. While the Duke is still breathing, you begin to put the pieces together all at once and realize that someone beat you to the Duke. You message Zatari quickly, and Sydney immediately downs one of the guards. Zatari jumps into action and begins driving the carriage away, while the rest of you scramble inside. Sydney is hit with two arrows, but you make your escape with a cleverly thrown smoke bomb. You ride back into town, still disguised, and decide to drop the Duke outside of a tavern while still robbing him blind. You snag three bottles of nice brandy, four small paintings, two medium paintings, and one large painting, as well as five days worth of rations and seven elixirs and potions. From his person, you take 10 rings, three of which have large gems inlaid in them, and a gold necklace. You also find two letters in his pocket, one being a formal letter of passage with his coat of arms at the top, and another one, uh, once you make it back to the carriage and begin your journey back with Delphi, you take a look at that second letter. The letter is not notably not sealed with his usual co coat of arms and written in a different hand than the first. Apparently, the Duke has a mistress who lives in Baldur's Gate, as well as a very young illegitimate son. Zatari begins to wonder if this wasn't a random hit job, and if the Zentarum were somehow involved. Your first adventure ends with Sienna selflessly gifting each of you a slice of her coveted pie. So, um, you guys have returned to the Thieves' Guild. Uh, it is now, uh, basically, the, uh, like, pretty late in the night. Uh, from when from you, when you guys came back from your adventure. Um, it's probably like three in the morning. It, there's very few people rustling around at this time. Uh, I believe Sydney had already 
dipped out to go back to her apartment with pickles. Um, yes. And kind of everyone had, had been pretty tired, so you guys would most likely retire to your own quarters. Gemma, of course, heading back to her place of residence. Anything that you guys quickly wish to do before you bed down for the evening? Sydney's gonna face plans on her bed. Pass yeah. out. You see that Pickles like. I think I like... would write some notes. Oh, it's, okay. Zatara's so gonna do some paperwork. She's 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 getting fairly good at it now. <laughs> she knows what she has to do to keep the position. <laughs> She's like, if I don't do it now, I'm going to completely forget in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Pickles does that thing that birds do where, like, they fluff up, like, really, really round, just, like, on your headboard, mm -hmm. and, like, nuzzles himself mm -hmm. into his feathers and just immediately also falls asleep. He is very well trained. Like, you've noticed that, like, he, while he may, like, steal food and stuff, mm -hmm. he is, uh, he is particular about, like, where he relieves himself, and he, when he is being, like, chaotic, it's, it's on purpose. Gemma and, uh, uh, Sienna. Sienna, you go back to your room. Um, it's pretty quiet within the halls. Uh, and you you slip back and you uh, try not to wake your sweet mate too much. Um, mm -hmm. Your sweet mate is a tabaxi uh, with dark black fur. Um, and she is a uh, you guys get along well because she also isn't super bubbly or chatty, and you guys kind of just, like, avoid each other for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, quietly return the clothes that I borrowed from my sweet mate. Back okay. Back to the You, like... Alright, go ahead and make, um... Go ahead and make a stealth check to, uh not wake her up. Okay, what do I do? Go to your thing. Mm -hmm. And then scroll all the way down to stealth. Mm -hmm. So it's a plus six. Mm -hmm. So you'll roll your d20 and you'll add six. Fifteen plus six. So twenty-one. Twenty-one, baby! Soundlessly. You, like, open the door, <laughs> slip, the, slip the clothes back in, um, all of, like, all of her clothes are black, so mm. you're sort of just like, eh, it goes in any drawer. Um, <laughs> your sweetmates, uh, is named Zuma, by the way. Zuma. 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 Gemma. Uh, you make your way back to your place of residence, uh, and you enter your home, which is, again, pretty nicely decorated. It's, it's full of ornaments and trinkets and tchotchkes. It's quiet, and, uh, you light a candle on your altar for Loki, say a quick prayer, mm. do your 12-step skincare routine. <laughs> oh, Christ. I also, like, in the middle of my 12-step uh, skincare routine, I think I also just, like, <laughs> I eat some of the pie that was given to me. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm just talking to Oh my god, it's so cute that she gave us a piece of pie. <laughs> it's a good- it's a good snack before bed. Absolutely. I think Zatari would eat her pile. <laughs> <laughs> while, while you're doing the paperwork, like, yeah. a little bit of blueberry falls on one of the scrolls and you, like, kind of try and brush it away really quickly. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's all surprise for whoever has to file this. 
You see, I'm um, like nose pressed. It's okay. <laughs> I, I think maybe. <laughs> Um, you, when you go back to your office, you do notice Ruby has fallen asleep at her desk. <laughs> oh. Is there, like, a little couch in my office anywhere? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I feel like she would probably have one. Yeah, yeah. Um. You're all about comfort and style. Yeah. Would she be hard to carry if you have no, she plus is... zero strength? <laughs> well, <laughs> even, like, we discussed last time that Ruby is pretty young. Like, she's only 17, which is very young, especially for tiefling standards. Uh, tieflings aren't normally considered to be, like, adults until they're 60. So she is quite young um even with a zero a strength yeah like you could you could easily pick her up and you and she's just she's out she's out like a light and she um as you pick her up she sort of like almost like instinctually like kind of rolls into you a little bit and you're able to like put her on the couch and cover her with a blankie give her a pillow and blankie yeah, yeah. The next morning, you guys get a long rest. Uh, Gemma, go ahead and show uh, Sienna how to do that on her actual sheet. Yes. You're like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure, though? Um, are you sure you want all of your? I guess it is nice that it asks though, because if you hit the button accidentally and it like know, resets it all your, your stuff, and you're like, oh no, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zatari, as a note as well, like your quarters are essentially like attached by a short hall to your office. So you're basically able to, you know, you do the old, uh, you have like a little, little statuette on your desk that knocks over and, uh, you're able to like a bookshelf slides and you're able to go into your quarters, which are secret hallway, very, <laughs> yeah, secret tunnel, uh, <laughs> very, like whoever decorated your office also did your quarters. Love. You and you have a lot more trinkets in here, like so cozy. A, a lot more like personal effects. Um, and you can also kind of, if anyone else was in here, they could see the money that you own and and like into like just the quality and design of your bed and uh, like how ornate everything is and you also have quite a bit of like more rare items like you have a very nice crystal ball in here not like not like the one that you use to travel with um you have fine tapestries and and silks everywhere um you never like you and ahima just did not have a lot when you were growing up and it was always you know you uh, trying to scavenge for money and, and con your way. And now that you are a legitimate treasurer who has a job and Ahima is retired because of you, I mean, you have more money than you can really even spend in your lifetime. Um, material girl. Yes, you're a material girl now. Um, <laughs> and... You... I feel like she'd have like cool magic stuff too. Like maybe her ceiling is like oh yeah, your ceiling is like enchanted like to look like the that night glow. sky. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. The candles float. Everything got... is real fancy. Yes. Real fancy. It's got tons of things that glow and shimmer and sparkle. Yeah. Um, you uh tuck yourself in 
to your very plush bed um, with your, like, silk sheets and down feather pillows. You look up at the moving constellations above and you fall asleep very peacefully. The next morning, um, Gemma, when, uh, around what time do you try and, like, hit up the temple before your shift? Are you, like, what's your morning routine like? I think on, like, a typical day, I probably wake up around 6.30, do some morning stretches, say my affirmations, like, eat the rich, um, (laughs) look at one bitch, you know, (laughs) things like that. And then, um, then I go to the temple, and then from the temple, I think I try and go home to, like, I don't know. If I uh, go like dress up for work, um, put my face on, uh, pack a lunch, mm-hmm. you know, sell all those sort of self care things, and then and then go to work. But I think today, because we got back at around three, I think I I try to sleep in a little bit, so I think I wake up around like eight. Mm-hmm. Um but then do my normal routine. So you wake up and you notice that the sun is a little higher in the sky than you would normally see. And you sort of like gather your like gather yourself a little bit and uh, uh, like quickly you have you have like robes that you wear to to pray in you don't want to look too uh even though loki's like a chaos god like your nor like your preferred wear is a little too like ostentatious and revealing for church essentially but uh you don your robes and you scurry off and the temple isn't super far uh but it's a it's a you, you take a brisk pace and as you near the temple you see a bit of a crowd outside, which is not normal. Um. I check out the crowd. You draw near to the crowd. And you, um, you overhear a lot of, like, hushed, sort of worried whispers. And you, you kind of quicken your pace even more. And you start to, like, get, get to the outer layer. And you start hearing, oh, did you see what happened? Yo, there was blood everywhere. I, I just can't believe at the temple. No, it happened earlier this morning. And no one was here. Oh, just him. And you start getting a little panicked and you start like kind of like pushing your way through the crowd. And you see that there's some flaming fists sort of like pushing back the crowd. All right, all right, everybody, please remain calm. We have this taken care of. We have contacted the healers and the clerics. Everyone, please disperse. Carry on your day. And he starts like kind of shooing people away. Some people leave, but not a lot. Um, I approach one of them and I, good morning, what happened here? He looks at your robes and he looks at you and he goes, uh, well, are you a, are you a priest here? This at this temple? Sorta. Uh, come with me, miss. And he sort of like kinda like 
protects you from the crowd and like takes you off to the side. He's still not bringing you inside the temple, but uh, you and you kind of like look around and you don't see any of your other uh, com- like uh, other clerics or anything like that. It's all just strange faces. And he goes, uh, well, listen, I, I hate to tell you this, but, um, but, you know, the head, the head priest, um, Father Winters. Yeah. Uh, well, he, uh, well, he seemed to have, uh, had a little accident this morning. What are you talking about? Uh, well, I'm sorry to tell you, miss, but, uh, Father Winter's passed. He's, he's dead. It, we're not, we're not sure if, uh, how it happened. It was foul play. You have any enemies? Well, I don't mean to be rude, mister, but that doesn't really sound like an accident, now does it? Uh, if Father Winter's was... Why old was he not? A man might be 250 years old, but that's like what in human years? He's an elf. He sort of, he, he, he himself is a human dude. And like, you can kind of see him like doing the math in his head. And he's like, yeah, um, right. Uh, we did gauge that he was an elf. Um, and you know, elves do live. Was he um, like mutilated? That you couldn't even tell he was an elf? My gods, what uh, happened? Can uh, I see? I'm a cleric. Well, um, he sort of like looks back and you see that there are like more flaming fists like all in your temple. Kind of like looking at like everything that you guys have up in there and he goes, well, he could have fallen, uh, but uh, he was alone, so don't really have too many witnesses. Uh, we're wait, we're waiting on a grave cleric. Go we'll speak with dead, maybe to get some insight on that. But you know, they're uh, they're kind of rare in the city. We had to reach out to a couple of the other temples. We're trying to keep this hush hush. We don't want we don't want anyone to get uh, excited or uh, worried about a uh, priest killer on the loose. There's a lot of temples in the city. Sure, I'll keep telling you a little story about a man fallen in the temple, but uh. Your secret's safe with me for now. I'd still like to go in the temple. I need to do what I need to do. I won't touch nothing. I just need to do my morning prayers. And who knows, maybe Loki was watching after us. Maybe he saw some shit. Go ahead, make a persuasion check. You're never alone with Loki. He's always <laughs> with you. It's always watching. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Persuasion? Oh, persuasion, yeah. This house <laughs> uh, uh, 21. Ooh. He kind of like grimaces for a second, and then he sort of... You give him like the, the real good like, please, sir. I'm a woman in distress. <laughs> like big <laughs> eyes, and you give him a little, a little pout on the lips, and he's like, "Okay, okay." I can't okay. be surprised, please. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Won't touch anything. Please don't disturb the other fists. All right, all right. And he sort of like walks you in. Um, you see so many flaming fists around. Um, they are clearly, like, uh, taking, like, there's one who looks, like, a little scrawny, and he's just taking a ton of notes, like, on a very long scroll, uh, while the other ones are, like, 
occasionally doing magic on like random things to like discern if anything was like enchanted or or anything special. Um, the low key temple is kind of sparse compared to a lot of other temples. Um, really, the only main thing that's in there is like the big altar at the front, which has like this huge statue of Loki himself. Um, and there's like quite a bit of offerings amongst the candles and incense that align on the altar. Uh, you do see uh, that off to the left, a figure is covered with a uh, cloth of fabric. There's a large pool of blood around him. Can I... Can I walk over and... Um... Can I walk over and just like, just stand next to the body? Um, I know that the cloth is covered, but like, somehow I want to do some sort of medicine check. Okay. To see if I could figure out like, how exactly this man died. You see, um... Like, can I tell like, weapon the wound might have, mm-hmm. like, what a, you know, things like that. Got it, yeah. I mean, one, you see, like, a lot of blood. Two, him falling would make very little sense, because uh, there's no, like, ladders or anything around yeah. that he would have fallen off of. You guys don't even really have, you guys don't even have a second story like of of seats or anything so yeah it's it's definitely immediately looks like foul play um he wasn't that old he was an elf and he had many many years like left in him and as far as you know father winters was pretty loved like everyone really liked him he was very kind um and he looked after his own like he he always had a kind word for someone and you just can't imagine who would go after this man um i think i approach the scrawny looking person taking all the notes and uh I just I'm very kind to them and I say, um, hello, good morning. Um is there anything I can do to assist the investigation? Uh what you happened see, this morning? He has like in- extremely large spectacles. He's like yeah, hello, um <clears throat> you must be a cleric? priest of this temple? Yes, I am. Well, as you can see, a man is dead. I could tell by all the blood, yeah. (laughs) What happened? How'd he die? He, uh, kind of like fumbles back on his notes a little bit and he like reads like the first couple lines and then he like flips it back down and reads a couple more lines and he goes we don't know great uh and then he sort of like looks at the thing again he's like head injury right here Mm mm-hmm Where? His head? His neck? Just says head injury. Hmm. So someone he, like, puts a question mark next in? to it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, seem, seem to be sort of a 
a back of the back of the head sort of deal here. Um, he was recognizable. Well, no shit. He's the head priest here. Of course, everyone knows him. Listen, lady. Uh, we don't normally let Name a... Gemma. Let's Gemma. Uh, Miss Gemma, we we don't normally let civilians interfere with our uh, <clears throat> investigation. I. Well, do you have any information about who would be after Father Winters? I get really close to this man. Like, like, cheek to cheek, so I'm by his ear. Okay. <laughs> and I whisper seductively, okay. but like menacingly, and I go, Sir, I don't know what's happening here. But I'll give you three gold if you tell me the truth right now. What happened to Father Winters? Please, I need to know. All right, make a persuasion check. Twenty-three. He sort of like gives like Very a good. he like tugs at like his like his collar a little bit and he gives like a audible like gulp. And he goes, uh, uh, Miss Gemma. I make sure my tits were also like right next to his arm. Just, you know? uh, yeah. like, he's um, we're like he he he's like he's like a halfling or may, maybe a gnome and he, so he's not that tall and so he's no. like kind of right at you know boob height for you so then the boobs <laughs> in his face great yeah, love yeah. that <laughs> and he's sort of like he's really trying to like look at your face <laughs> and he goes um miss miss Gemma we suspect foul play and we appreciate any information that you may have on this uh murder we we think he was murdered i'm sorry i just <laughs> we don't know a whole lot yet we'll wait for the gla grave cleric Ugh. he's wildly What's uncomfortable your name, um it's tony Tony. Tony, dear. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for your help. The confirming that it was a murder helps out a lot. I'll do what I can to help you guys out. All you gotta do is help me out too, okay? Anything for you, Miss Gemma. I'll, uh, I'll make sure, I'll make sure you're on the list. If you, if you just, if you need to come back today to, uh, gather your things, or, um, prepare arrangements, and you, you, you tell him that, uh, Tony sent you. He looks around, like, making sure that no one sees him, like, doing this deal, and everyone's, like, kind of not paying attention to you guys, and he just, like, looks back at you, again, trying so hard to look at your eyes. <laughs> I love that I'm like fully cloaked and it's distracting. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I want to Big say that we went over that you were stacked, but you know. <laughs> I just assumed. Yeah. <laughs> I sh I stroke his hair. Big Tony, thank you so much for your help. You I kiss his forehead. You see, he's like he is a bright cherry red and he like he he can't even like really say anything anymore he's just like yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> thank you miss Gemma. you put my name down right on that list g-e-double-m-a you're pretty sure he forgot his and own then... name <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> doing like the anime thing where like steam's yeah. coming out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kiss him on the forehead again, and I go. You've been so sweet. Thank you so much. Yes, I'll probably be back later to see if there are any evening services that I can assist with and to see about, you know, any sort of burial um, procedures we might need to do. But if I get any info, Big Tony, you're the first one I'm going to tell. Big Tony. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll see you later. And he kind of like, he like kind of like gives like a little motion of like, please excuse me. And he just like very slowly like walks off just like to the gardens. <laughs> can I make, can I make a... Um, oh dear. Can I just see if anyone saw that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't a... being very discreet. <laughs> so... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can um, <laughs> make a perception or insight check. Twenty-one again. <laughs> you uh, you look around and um. You you honestly don't have a super high opinion of the Flaming Fist in the first place. Um, mm. And you are just sort of like, they suck at their jobs. And so you really don't trust them to do anything about this per se. Um, or, yeah. or, or figure anything out. So you are pretty much going to immediately run to Zatari and your, and Sienna and, uh, Sydney to sort of rally the troops here. Before I leave, I know this sounds weird, but can I like try to collect some blood in one of my empty vials? Sure. Um, no. go... Go back over and uh, make me a sleight of hand check. Uh, 18. Yeah, you are Rolling able... good tonight. Yeah. Thank you, dice. <laughs> Thank you, dice. <laughs> um, you go back over and you sort of like, kind of try and uh, disguise it as, like, you're kneeling to do, like, a little prayer over the body, and within your, like, robes, which have, like, long sleeves and such, you're able to just, like, and quickly scoop up some of the blood, which, at this point, is, like, coagulating a little bit. It's, it's not, like, fresh, fresh. It's definitely a couple hours old. Um, I leave, I see Big Tony, I blow him a kiss, I go back to, <laughs> um, Zatari, I not I politely knock on her office door before entering. I mean... Ma'am, some shit has gone down. <laughs> <gasps> Spill the tea, girl! <laughs> well, you know what I has happened? You know I pray to Loki, and I was supposed to be there this morning to pray, but then I saw this big crowd around my temple, which, like, never really happens. And then, um, everyone was whispering, like, did you hear? Did you hear? And I said, no, I didn't hear. What happened? And then I saw some flaming fist fellas there, and that's never good. Ooh. Um, Father Winters has died, apparently by falling? By falling, quotation marks? With the amount of blood on the floor, it definitely didn't look like a fall. Mm. I don't know if this will be helpful, but I brought some blood back. Oh. Well, that would not be helpful to me, but uh, maybe 
another person could use this. Maybe they could see if there's some sort of magic, magical essence left to see if, you know, magic was used to kill were, him. Were you able to look at the body? Not really. I was busy flirting with a halfling. <laughs> uh, flirting. Uh, well, I would be very interested to look at the body to see... Maybe you could do like a medicine check on me. I don't know what the <laughs> real world is going to happen. But um, yes, you could look at his body and see if maybe this is really, really foul play, you know, and... Well, in my in my time of flirting, I learned that it was confirmed it was a murder. Oh. He was bashed in the head. Oh. Do they know what with? Of course they don't. They're the, they're the fist fellas. They don't know shit. Uh, yes. They are <laughs> not very good at their job. Hmm. You wanna come with me? Should we get the others? Maybe we can look? Well, if this is very important to you, then uh, sure. It just doesn't feel right. You know, he was loved by the community. He was only 250 years old for crying sakes, you know? It's good point. A young man. Would I know if he was involved in any of like my charity stuff? Yeah, um, Father Winters was one of the, uh, priests who you approached when you had the idea to start partnering up with different temples and clerics throughout the city, and Father Winters was all for it. Um, you remember him being extremely nice, um, you liked him a lot. You probably had him over for tea a couple of times, um, and he was incredibly likable. You, you, you kind of like, like, go back through your memories, and you would be shocked to hear that this man had any enemies at all. Hmm. Yes, this does sound very fishy. Yes, I think we should get gather the others and see if they would like to join us on this investigation. It seems like foul play, but I would like to know why. Same. You think it has anything to do with the shit we got into last night? It doesn't seem like it would be related. I don't think he had any dealings with, uh... Was he a duke? I forgot. He was a duke. Yeah. I don't think he had any dealings with the duke that I am aware of. So I don't think... I cannot think of something that would make them related, but... I'm just worried that maybe, I don't know, Maybe someone from the Zentarium got him. But I know what that is. Yeah, you are. You have heard of the of the Zentarium, and you have the Thieves Guild has tried to keep them out of Baldur's Gate as much as possible. But it's a big city, and oh, I mean, right. you know. Crime is done, and it's your... The Thieves Guild does, like, a lot of, like, petty things. Petty crimes, helping out the downtrodden. There's a lot of people in the city who just, like, don't have resources, and uh, the Flaming Fist are kind of crap at their job, and you guys are there to help them out when you can. Um, while the Zentarum kind of specializes in, like, drug dealing, murders, hitmen, like, the more serious stuff that you kind of 
warn against in the Thieves Guild. Okay. Yes, if this is related to the Zentarum, I would be very interested to learn more. Um, yes, I think we should follow this thread. Um, I will... Uh, Ruby! You see Ruby, like... Okay, she's still asleep. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see Ruby, who, um... Uh, was asleep on the couch until just now. Like, wake up with a start. <gasps> um, uh, good, uh, yeah, good yes, morning, uh, Ruby. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, I'm so sorry, Oracle. I didn't mean to fall asleep at the desk. I, I no, no, I, don't worry, don't worry. Calm emotions. It's okay. <laughs> so, I think I will be going out again today. Oh, okay. Um, you did such a good job yesterday. I looked did, over did your I? work. You did perfectly. Yes, okay. you did. Okay. You did such a good job. I think you can handle one more day. Um, yes, I I did some paperwork last night as well, so you won't have too much to do. But okay. Uh, I would appreciate you holding the fort down while I am gone. Of, co of course, of course, Oracle. Um, uh, whatever you need. Um, I'm. All right. I need some coffee, and she kind of like, like <laughs> yes. rubs her eyes and like runs out of the room, like super embarrassed. <laughs> I feel like Zatario would definitely have like a French press. Or no, you do. You absolutely do, and you sort <laughs> of like. Pull on this though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you look at like the French press slash Nespresso machine, and you're sort of like, uh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, well, let's go see if the other two are around. I guess. What time is it? Is it early morning? Um, it's like probably around 11 now. Well, it is almost lunchtime, so maybe we could check the cafeteria. Something tells me Sienna's probably eaten another pie. Which, by the way, did you eat your slice last night? Oh my god! Yes, it, it was delicious. so good. The crust was so buttery and crunchy. <laughs> to you die for. You were about her hookup. Really good. <laughs> yes, she seems to be on the no for the best pies around. Should definitely ask her about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, to the cafeteria. <laughs> Walking uh, and talking. <laughs> <laughs> While you guys head off to the cafeteria to find Sienna, who will almost assuredly be there, um, Sydney, what's your morning yep. routine look like? Um, Sydney probably sleeps in as much as she possibly can. Mm hmm. Uh, and when she does finally wake up, she glares out the window, especially if it's sunny outside, <laughs> covers her head with a pillow, naps for an additional, like, 20-30 minutes, and then finally rolls out of bed. Um, so I'm assuming she probably wouldn't get to the Thieves Guild until closer to lunchtime? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little after lunch? And yeah. then, of course, she makes sure. A lady that... after my own heart. Yeah. <laughs> you really uh, only go to the thieves guild yeah. for free food. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same page to that one. That is very accurate. Um, because every every single time 
when after Sydney wakes up, she goes to her kitchen and she rummages and she looks for food and she then she remembers, oh, I really don't. I have like super basic stuff that probably should be thrown away, so I'll just go to the beach. Field. Yeah, you you again <laughs> you look at your like your paltry like canned goods that are definitely like your it's it's like from your neighbors and you are like yeah, yeah it's like some canned fruit and and then you also have like uh you see that pickles has pretty much ravaged the entire bread loaf and it's just full of like it's like it's like a, an edge piece now and you, you can see it's like a ton of like beak <laughs> like pokes in it and uh and you um you 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 also notice that the kitchen is starting to get a little funky because like any fresh vegetables that you had are definitely starting to go off now. Ooh. That's like my pantry. <laughs> <laughs> Same. So, well, that's a waste. And she'll <laughs> grab like a bag and start putting. Because the trash can is on the way out. So she's like, I'll just... She's all about efficiency. So she grabs all the stuff that's going bad, puts it in a bag, compostable bag, and then uh, makes her way out and head towards the Thieves Guild. Eco-friendly ranger. <laughs> ranger. You, uh... <laughs> as you, as you, like, Gotta take out be. the trash, and you, like, throw it in the... in into the, like, designated trash area that you have, you hear a familiar uh, ahead, and you see uh, pickles uh, flying, like, over your head and you, uh you, like, rub in between you, like, rub in between your eyes and you're just like god damn it okay, yeah, I have this big-ass raven I thought I, I imagined that yeah, I thought I imagined that <laughs> All right. Do that. It, I'm assuming Pickles is just flying overhead for the most part. Yeah, he he going. follows you like and uh you are just sort of you remember now that you're thinking back on it. You remember Bahiri like she got that raven on one of on a on a random town like in a random town somewhere and it was one of those things where like you guys need to re-up on supplies and there was this wild pet shop in the area and Brahiri was like oh my gosh I have to go in and you were like don't buy anything and Brahiri was like, I won't. And then she came out and she had this like very small, like young raven. And she was telling you all about how uh, how smart they are and how she was going to train him and like how they're supposed to be excellent at mimicry and uh, and you just, like, gave her sassy. Okay. Okay. It, it probably is still mad, let's be honest. But anyway. So, <laughs> Sydney uh, heads to the Thieves Guild Hall um, and ends up getting... Me. Yeah. Is, like... I truly only <laughs> pop in for free food. And you yeah. uh you like you flash your uh medallion at the at the front and they let you in and you notice that like you haven't gotten here as late as you normally do. Um and it's like kinda <laughs> crowded and you like sigh deeply. Mm -hmm. Um you very quickly spot Sienna, who, as I mentioned before, sticks out in a crowd. And you see that her, like, tray is quite full of of, of of assortment of things. 
And uh, as you jump in a line and start pulling things out of trays, uh, you hear familiar voices behind you of Zatari and Gemma, who seem a little escalated, given the good circumstances that you guys had come upon last night. But they're usually energetic anyways. I don't know if Cindy would notice a difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fair. You just like you pretend. Can I roll like an insight check or something? Sure, sure. Roll an insight check. Although I, no, 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 no. I can't because Cindy hasn't had coffee yet. Okay. So <laughs> Cindy looks at it and is like, I can't deal with this right now, and just just, just ignores them to until put stuff she gets on coffee. your plate, and you're like, yes, mm-hmm. continental breakfast. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. It's it's like mm-hmm. brunch, and so you're putting like. You know, you got, there's like, there's fresh fish and like fresh bread, Mm. eggs, Mm. uh, lots of like Mm -hmm. fruit and vegetables. The Thieves Guild does have like a garden that they have like not too far off. Like, Mm. uh, Zatari and the other, and the others have really like tried to put their, um, their money into just like the bettering of communities as of late. And Mm -hmm. you're not mad that you reap the benefits. (laughs) No. Well-balanced meal, everything I need. Mm -hmm. And coffee. And there is, yeah, there is like a (laughs) big old thing of like, like, you know, when you go and there's, and it's like a, like a big old like tankard of black coffee um and one of those is, huge insulated like yes <laughs> and it jugs. is hot and it is fresh perfect mm. i grab that and then i go sit in front of sienna still not acknowledging or just agreeing to whatever <laughs> satari and Gemma saying just not even competing. Sydney, you are here. Oh no. Good yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. How are you feeling? Uh like it's intentional. You can like you, you know, like in the thing you see there in anime, you see the little dots above her head yeah. like yeah. trying to process. <laughs> it's like, um, coffee and she grabs the coffee and she starts walking towards sienna being like coffee coffee we drink coffee Coffee." as the second that you sit down um you Mm. uh you hear a you go you guys all hear a large and a massive raven flies in and drops a large (sighs) dead fish on the end of the table (laughs) <laughs> it makes like a loud wet like, flop flop and then he starts like eating it on the ground. Yep, nope, not processing that. Pickles. <laughs> Could you at least use a plate pickles? <laughs> Cindy is not processing, she is drinking her coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so. You are going to make more work for the cleaning crew. Doesn't even look up at you. (laughs) I have a question for you. Do you just eat exclusively desserts, or do you have (laughs) like a like a balanced diet also? Um, I try to stick with um things that are like tart or pie related. Mm. So (laughs) right now, Sienna's probably eating like pigeon pot pie. Yeah, you you got quiche, (laughs) pigeon pie, like, it is, uh, it's, it's full of, like, things with crusty goodness on them. That's so good! Brought him over to Omer. Oh my god. Uh, I got some tarts, some raspberry tarts, Mm. and Mm. some quiche that were related to the pigeons. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Pickles. Ooh, yeah. Pickles, like, looks up for one second and gives you, like, a big side eye and then just keeps, like, gnawing on the fish. (laughs) Makes 
so like we kind of have a little bit of a problem sort of kind of before breakfast <laughs> yeah it happened earlier this morning dear lord that's early you telling me funny you say that it happened at the temple okay. my temple to be exact my temple's the kitchen i respect that <clears throat> My cat's here. Okay. <laughs> my ne my <laughs> nephew is here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what happened was, and then I relay everything, and then I went over to Ma'am's office and I let her know, and now we're here. Yes, I think this is worth looking into. They said he fell? No way that man fell. He's the most graceful man I knew. <sighs> Seems suspicious. <laughs> what do you say? I don't I don't believe that Father Father Winter would have fallen, you know. He was pretty pretty easy on his feet. I took a Zumba class with him once and it was <laughs> Pretty intimidating. It doesn't sound like him then. It also doesn't really sound like you're the type of person to take an aerobics class. <laughs> Maybe that's how you keep all the pie off. You gotta do something, you know? I can't fit in my roommate's clothes if I'm putting on weight. <laughs> I am loving your outfit today, by the way. It's very colorful. <laughs> I'll tell Zuma you said so. <laughs> <laughs> she is, of course, sporting well, a Gemma... green velvet cape as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gemma has a theory that this might be the Zentarim, which may have also been involved with the Duke. I don't so know. Maybe. Feels a little weird. What could um, what could the what, what could Father Winter have to do with the Zintari? I don't know. Is a good question. Hopefully there were no wrong dealings, or that he was on someone's bad side for something. I don't know why though. If if we were to find out more about him, where would we look to find out? We'd probably have to go back to the temple first, go through his things, investigate the body. Yes, I, I think this in. is a good... Name's Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Big Tony. Well, I call Big... him Big Tony. Big Tony? For a halfling? Big yeah. halfling Tony. <laughs> you know, you got a little, you got a, you got a butter in him up a little bit, you know. Yeah, it doesn't really feel good when you're called big in the personality. <laughs> <laughs> Medium Tony, <laughs> sub, sub average Tony, mid Tony. <laughs> well, I think the temple is a great place to start. Sydney, you have enough coffee? What do you think? Yeah, I'm awake now. Um, yeah, I think the temple would make the most sense. A good place to start. Figure out this chaos. Hmm. Sydney, do you want one of my pigeon pot pies? They're really fresh. <laughs> sure. There you go, friend. 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 Oh, friend. 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 Okay, now it's a little much. Now it's a little much. <laughs> now it's a little much. And I focus on the pigeon pot vibe. Good. You see that uh, as, as we leave, I'm going to take like a couple of tankards of coffee to go. Perfect. <laughs> you, you have a magical thermos, I'll allow that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You you also <laughs> see that like pickles like as as you guys like get up to start like leaving, pickles just goes and like ravages like the rest of whatever's on your plate. And he starts like horking down like a bunch of eggs and uh like anything he can get his beak on, he's going for. You can see why he's big. <laughs> Big boy. Yeah, he's a big boy. Big round boy. <laughs> Average pickle? No, no. That's a big pickle. Big pickle. Big pickle. Dill pickles. Yeah. Dill pickles. <laughs> yeah, he's Tommy he's pickles? prize winning pickles. Yeah, he's he's a little round. Um, <laughs> so you guys, you guys enough, uh, yeah, he'll, yeah, he he burns calories. Uh, so you guys leave yep. with your tankards of coffee. Sydney, kind of a little slower than you guys, but like s trying to like sip, like drink as much as she possibly can to like pep oh. herself up. Um, while you guys like make your way through the streets, Baldur's Gate is a whirling dervish of sights and sounds and smells, and like you all, you on every corner, yeah. there's someone like hawking goods and uh like calling to uh read the paper or buy something from their stall you see women uh in fancy dress and low-born dress scurrying onto their general errands for the day children running in and out of alleys uh and some of you have lived here a long time and others have only been here a few years or not that much time at all. And even if you had lived here for several, several years, like every day in Baltimore, <laughs> reconnected. I feel like this episode has been called Standby. Currently <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> taking a long rest. Yeah. Um, I, I, I re, re bumped up the thing. Mm. Anywho. You guys eventually make your way to the Loki temple. It is made of a gray stone. Um, doesn't have a ton of dressings around it. You can see that the crowd has dispersed, but the flaming fist still guards the outside. Gemma, could you work your magic with Tommy? Hmm. Sorry, my cat knocked over some water on a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Everything is chaos. Not a laptop. Everything is chaos today. At least it's not our roles. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> it's everything else but the roles. Gemma, you don't see. You Big Tony. That. <laughs> you don't see Big Tony, but you do see the guy who let you in earlier. We're outside the temple. Yeah. Um. Ma'am, I know this is sort of short notice. Do you think we can help this, like, wear some sort of disguise and, like, similar robes like mine? It'll probably help y'all get in a little easier. <clears throat> well, I think if we are with an official priestess of the temple, I don't think they should give us much trouble, and if they do, I can talk to them. Okay. <laughs> I walk up to the, to the guy. He, he sort of, like, nods um, at you. Bear with me. Oh, by the way, I think I'm probably in my human disguise. Okay, cool. Mm. Cool. Good to know. Um, he sort of, like, looks you guys over. He clearly recognizes Gemma. That she is purple. And so, you know, there's a, you know. It's not the nor- It's not the, the same most road, common- really also. It's not the most common skin- skin color. And he's like, No. Uh. <clears throat> Yes, uh, uh, you were, you were here earlier. Um, 
he sort of looks at your companions and he's like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't happen to have brought a grave cleric, would you? The grave cleric still has not come. He sort of like, that's okay. It's me. That's me. Sorry. I go up. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, roll a deception check for me. Sure. I, I was love gonna to. say like I was gonna. Um, what is she? Thirty twenty. Ah. He like he like looks at you and he sort of like like does like a huh, face and he's like, yeah, you seem mournful. Okay. <laughs> he sort of just like <laughs> takes a step back. <laughs> And is like, oh, knock yourselves out. I mean, uh, that was in poor taste. Um, right this way. What? <laughs> hey, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. And, yeah, and he sort of like sheepishly guides you guys to the front, and uh, it sort of gives like the okay to the other flaming fists around, and um. He, uh, uh, you guys see that, um, there is a lot less flaming fist on the inside now, and that it mostly seems to just be, um, uh, guards who have, like, been stationed outside of the temple so no one comes in, um, but there's only, like, one or two who are still in here, like, checking out the digs. Um, you also notice that there is no body on the floor anymore, and that's, and that, uh, a bunch of, like, the, there's obviously still, like, a noticeable spot on the floor, but you see a sort of, uh, you see, like, a, a, a maid who you kind of recognize, um, an, another halfling who's just, like, scrubbing the floors. What has happened to this crime scene? Oh, um, well, we, you know, we thought it was, like, awkward to just leave the body there, so we we decided to, uh, take him outside, uh, and then, uh, the, then the miss here said that, th that you guys would have, like, an area for sort of, uh, preparing for burial, so he's in the basement, um, and they're gonna, we're leaving it to the temple to sort of take care of his remains. Um, Acer just shrugs, like. So you oops. tamper in with the crime scene before the cleric could even ask him questions in his death? Whose orders oh, have you done name. this on? Uh, well. We, he sort of like looks around trying to like blame this on someone, like looking for a scapegoat. And he uh, is like, Who oh, made this decision specifically? Uh, well, there was another uh, uh, priest who came in here and uh, kind of wearing similar robes that you have and, and said that they would take care of it and that it was fine to move him and. Uh, I'm sorry if so we've... Me, because when I came in here earlier, I wasn't allowed to touch nothing. So oh, how yeah. was this supposed <laughs> other priest allowed to do stuff? He was very authoritative, miss. The only authoritative person is dead. He looks around, he's like, shit, I've made a mistake. Um, he goes, <laughs> he's like, uh... What, well, what was his name? Uh, he sort of like looks around and he's like uh, uh, Father 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 Garish I, I think was his name um, Garish? Garish? Do I believe him? <laughs> yeah, make an inside check. We know that that's not a name, right? <laughs> 
is this guy sweating profusely this right now? Is, this Just guy like... is sweating. Yeah. By like how pissed you guys are instantly. Next. Yeah, go ahead, start. I got a 27. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> He now, like, just how you guys are being really pissed off at him, he is, he has picked up on the fact that he has fucked up, and he is desperately, like, trying to make it seem like he was, like, innocent in, in the goings-on of this. Um, he is not lying about there being someone who came in and told them something so there is someone who is uh and just for Gemma's sake you do not know that name at all nor does that actually sound like a real name <laughs> yeah. there is this person uh that told you to do this well point take us direction. to them uh, you know maybe point in the direction <laughs> well he kind of went downstairs with the body I think you should show us. Okay. <laughs> and he sort of like <laughs> brusquely like walks by. Um, <laughs> and he takes you guys down to the basement. Uh, which... I'm not letting him get away with shit. <laughs> yeah. He takes you down to the basement. <laughs> and um, and uh, he he's he like goes to open the door and it's locked. He's like, huh, oh, weird. I don't remember. I don't know why he would have locked it. Uh, hello. And starts oh like God. rapping on the door, and uh, and he raps for like a little bit, and he's like, hello, and just. Can I check Can... the door for traps? Yeah. First? Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I tell if he's being truthful about like not knowing why the door would be locked? <laughs> Yes, go ahead. It's a 17. Uh, 17 doesn't seem trapped, just seems locked. Cool. And then I'll say, Raven Queen, forgive me. And then I pull out my thieves' tools, and I'm going to unlock the door. Okay. Roll a sleight of hand, and then Zatari, did you roll that insight check? That's a 18. Okay. 21. Um, you, you think, Zutari thinks that this guy is, is, is very much dude just doing his job and whoever came in here, like, took advantage of how stupid this, this, Mm -hmm. this officer is uh 18 the lock okay. uh like you hear a click on the other side of the door and the door opens sweet i, I cast Oops. past without trace on all of us except the doofus <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm gonna say to the doofus go get some guards and bring them down here. Okay. Sh yes, ma'am. Have them prepare for the anything. Oops. Yes, ma'am. He like salutes and then like very quickly walks away. <laughs> uh, you guys enter oh. the basement, which is very dark. Mm hmm. Um, I have dark vision. You have dark vision. Fantastic. I and you also guys have, have dark trace. vision. Okay, fantastic. So we're being stealthy? Alright, I'm stealthily going in. You guys like, <laughs> open the door. Does anyone don't have dark vision? I think you do. That's a good question. I don't think we do. Let me yeah, go. Yeah, typically don't. I'm gonna take you both like each by a hand and like lead you through. Well, would okay, I know this her. part like of the temple? Okay. Yes. Um. So you're not like 
immediately you know you're not like gonna immediately run into a table or anything but it's usually lit still with, with candles in here uh yes also sienna and Gemma do not have dark vision it's normally lit with candles in here so this is a little bizarre um there's no uh windows or anything down here as well so it is quite dark um but uh sydney and zatari you guys see um a body on the table it's basically a morgue down here and they do prepare right. the bodies for burial and such so you see that there's like a couple wooden coffins that are being that were like in the process of being made and like embalming equipment and stuff uh immediately you guys Can I notice keep an eye out? go ahead go ahead you keep an Can eye I out keep for an eye out for anything suspicious yeah absolutely you don't want to make a perception check before you go fully in the room? Yeah. Okay, you guys are like, Arr! and then like one hoof in. <laughs> like, Not great. I got an 11. Like, Scooby Doo, like in the door, like forehead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Stay> like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you, like, <laughs> you like kind of like your head's on a swivel Pretty and you look point. around and you don't you don't see anyone in in here besides the dead body. But even with the eleven perception, you notice uh that the dead body has had its head removed. <gasps> Can I still oh, go into no! Fuck. What was that to me? I would like to stealthily go into the room. I would yeah, like to it. stealthily go into the room. And pass without traces up. Yep. yep. I'm gonna yeah. relay this information to Gemma and So I already have a plus ten to my stealth, so that's <laughs> a plus twenty for me. Um so that's a thirty-three. <laughs> Hell yeah. You guys don't even notice that Sydney's not by your side anymore. Oh, um, <laughs> Uh, you guys are like, Sydney? I'm just gonna whisper to the other two about, like, what's going on if, if they can't see still. Be like, what? oh no. What? What His head is gone. gone! It's just gone, like someone has chopped it off and taken it. I, I don't see it anywhere around here. You you guys um, look look down and you're like, where's Sydney? Yeah. <laughs> All in sequence, one head down at a time. <laughs> yeah. Where is she? <laughs> like Domino's. Sydney, you oh. like so stealthily, like you're like shadows itself, whisk across to the yes. other side of the room and you Pink Panthers playing. <laughs> yeah. Doo 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 doo. <laughs> um <laughs> And you, uh, you make it to the other side of the, of the room and try mm -hmm. and, like, see if there's anyone hiding or anything like that. And besides the body very obviously missing its head, there's nothing else quite out of the ordinary. Go ahead and make me a investigation check to dig a little deeper on that. Okie dokie. Could I try to? I'm roll? rolling well tonight, guys. That means I'm gonna roll like shit the rest of the week. <laughs> um, <laughs> 19. Oh, okay, don't need my help. Um, with the 19, you see that there is a bit of blood that has pooled off of the table and onto the floor, um, signaling mm -hmm. that whatever, like the head was taken, like down here, essentially. Um, you also see that there appears to be some, like, autopsy tools off to the side, um, one of which, uh, like a, like a bone saw, essentially, has been used, like, it's, you can see it's, like, gl like, uh, you can see it's, like, wet a little bit. Um, glistening. you, yeah, glistening. You, <laughs> you notice that like some arbitrary things are missing from like it's basically like this whole room has a bunch of like shelves built around it and just uh -huh. like a couple like spots 
of of things on the shelves are like randomly taken like oh maybe there was like a potion bottle over there or there used to be like a tool of some sort over there um but they kind of don't seem to have any rhyme or reason on what was taken or anything like that is this a singular room or does it like keep going it's a singular room That's yeah a good question it's like pretty long. So there's no there, door, with an exception of the one we just. So walked. the only, yeah, the only door is the one we just went through. The only door is the one that you went out, yeah, and there's no windows. Gemma, would there be like, uh, like any kind of like secret exits in this room? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say. Can I look for? Gemma, does this temple have catacombs? Would I know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is a graveyard in like that's off of the gardens, and there is um, yeah. like a mausoleum. Uh, go ahead and roll me a history check. Can I look for like secret compartments or secret doors? Or <laughs> yeah, totally. there we go. Net one. <gasps> no! You don't remember uh, if for, there was any catacombs or anything. For... Definitely none that you've seen, just like mausoleums and graves. Uh, go ahead, and if you guys want to begin to, like, uh, light some candles and stuff and start, like, really searching the room, you guys can all make me investigation checks. I would like to cast a locate object and find this man's head. Okay. <laughs> As it's something that I'm familiar with, he locate was my head. Skull. I'm pretty familiar with him. Okay, for sure. Yeah. I got a I got an 18 on an investigation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I point out like the bo the bone saw to the group, the pool of blood, the missing objects. I got a 13. As the lights are coming out, like, okay, so we have some missing objects here. We have, like, and you guys just said he just appears, but the yeah, lights yeah. start turning on. Like, I rolled a 21. Else. Okay, for investigation. Ooh, cool. Whoa! Yeah. Um, uh, with, with those higher rolls, um, <laughs> Sydney, you are fairly preoccupied with trying to make rhyme or reason of like what the objects were that were taken, and you're like inspecting yeah. the dust around it, trying to discern how big or little the objects were. The 13, uh, Zatari, you are. You're looking around, but you can see that Gemma's like in a state of panic, and you're kind of like trying to comfort her a little bit while she begins to cast Locate Object. Uh, Sienna, you, um, take out a raspberry tart from your bag and begin munching. <laughs> and you go over to a bookcase, and you notice that one of the books is taken. Ooh. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Uh... Well, I'm going to look at what section the books are in. Cool. Great. That makes sense. You notice yeah, that fine. the tomes pertain to a, a, a few very specific things. One, you see a, a lot of like books about like the history of Baldur's Gate. And within History of Baldur's Gate, you also see like more technical like tomes like about like architecture and the engineering of the city etc etc uh and then you also see kind of like the run of the mill like cleric books medicine books etc etc um and then at the bottom which is where the missing book is you notice that uh a lot of the books are actually about other gods which uh is kind of uncommon to see in a, in a temple that is for one god, mm -hmm. but not like unheard of for other priests to be knowledgeable of of the pantheon. Right. Um. 
you let us know about the book? Yeah, I'm gonna call Gemma over and show her what I found. And maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna call Zatari too, because I feel like Zatari knows might not might might know more about this than me. So Oh, you have found a missing book? Yeah, it's in a weird part of the library. Have you heard of these other gods, Gemma? I, I mean, I've heard of other gods, but I don't really pay attention to most others because, you know, I'm dedicated to the one, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so. No. Why? Are there other books about other gods? There's other books about other gods, but there's a lot of books about history and the architecture of Baldur's Gate. I wonder if the person that did this to Father Winter somehow escaped or has something to do with maybe underground tunnels or something with the city. Or, I don't know. I mean, how would they have left this room if it was locked from the inside? I think there's another way out of here. Well, I mean, there's always, like, dimension door and stuff like that. Oh, that's yeah. true. And I touch, start just touching books and trying to pull them. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> As you begin to touch all the books, you notice that, it, that the book in question that is missing is actually part of, like, a series of books. And the series of books is oh. called uh, A is for Zuth and Other Gods, and it is the second tome that is missing. A is for what? A Zuth. I was. A Zuth. You put that so, on it's B, so it's B that's missing. So B is missing. All of them are titled What's A is for Zuth and Other Gods, and it's just one, two, three, four. Which you guys are kind oh, of like, God. that's a bad God. naming system, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a bad naming system, so okay, cool. Yeah, you see it goes up to um what? eleven. I think. Oh. So this priest that was killed, he was a priest of Loki? Yeah. My bad. It goes up to seven, because Does... I totally know Rom Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, yeah. Yeah. Seven, sure, eleven, whatever. Does Loki have? Does Loki have enemies as other gods? Well, sorta, kinda. I mean, other gods didn't really like him because you know he was always sort of mischievous and stuff. But he's he's kind of like does petty shit like we do back at you know the guild. But does he have any particular gods that really hates him though? Probably. More than likely. Gemma, go ahead and make me a Do you have any check. ideas? Would Loki ever hmm. assign one of his priests to do his bidding? Oh absolutely. Uh, yeah. God eight. Has Loki ever assigned you to do his bidding? Has Loki ever assigned me to- no, right? Not yet, anyway. You have gotten signs from Loki, but you have not been addressed by Loki himself. Um, 18 on the religion check, Satari? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know that Loki is actually technically a different pantheon than a lot of the main gods in Baldur's Gate. Like, Loki is part of this, like, in d d actually. Like, the Norse pantheon, and there's, like, all the Norse gods yeah. and whatnot. And while, like, Shar and Saloon and et cetera, et cetera, are part of the, like, main pantheon. So Loki's actually kind of like this outlier pantheon. So pretty much any of the gods that are, like, local to here would probably not like him infringing on their territory. That's a... That's a... It, could, it could be is that. Is there, like, a certain... Is there a certain purpose for someone to have their head in, like, a burial 
ceremony or oh, ritual. Oh, okay. This is, a, this is actually well, very good. Well, if you have a head, head. Uh, so in Speak With Dead, you need the full body. Like, basically, the, the body can't be, like, extremely burnt or, you like... You need the mouth. You need the mouth. You need the vocal cords to be attached. If someone, un, like, messes up the head or detaches it, you cannot cast Speak With Dead. So it's literally someone just covering their tracks. Which means that we won't be able to investigate the body and ask them, like, who did it? What happened? You know? Yeah, but when it, when it comes to religion, is there anything like like some religions like you need the whole body for like mm. a ritual when they when you bury them? Does that do anything religiously to the person as well? Because that could be like a personal thing, like where you kill someone and you dismember them, and so they cannot reach like the the final place, right? Mm. That's a great question. Uh, roll me a religion check, Sienna. I have a feeling the main Three. reason why the head is missing is probably Four. because he was murdered. Yes. Four? They don't want him talking. Mm hmm. She rolled that sexy three. Okay. <laughs> you. Uh. You, you're not super familiar with Loki. You're not like a very religious person in general. So you kind of like give voice to this. Uh, theory that you have and while it's not a bad theory at all the it doesn't like spark any ideas in the others but you kind of like tuck that away in the back of your mind of like could be something um can i can i look at some of the books in the room to see if there's like any kind of ritual burial rites for the god of loki sure 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 sydney go ahead I, I was gonna ask, could I take volume one mm -hmm. of the book and volume three? Okay. What's the last god in volume one? Excellent question. You open you open up volume one and you see that the last god is a a real um Aurel? You're not a hundred percent sure how to say that. <laughs> I will message with an that. A. With an A. Um, and then you see <laughs> that the second one or sorry, the third one is The first god in the fur in the third In the third one three. is Ball. Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming there are multiple gods in each volume, but whatever. Yes. That at least narrows down what you notice that there's three. There's three that are covered in each volume. volume. Yeah. So there's three between Aril and Ball. Mm-hmm. Missing. That's missing. Yep. Cool, cool. What were you gonna say, DM? Oh, I was gonna say. You hear a mm. very familiar voice and it kind of like alarms you greatly for a second it's very faint and it's kind of one of those things like you haven't heard someone's voice in like a couple years but you would know it anywhere and you hear outside very faintly help help and then a very convincing and long scream. Um, guys, someone's saying help, help, and someone's screaming, so we should... And do you said I recognize the voice? The voice. Do I you recognize the voice, yeah. Who it is? Who is it? If, if you didn't know any better, you would say it was Rahiri's voice. What? Did we all hear it? You very, like, as soon as, like, as soon as you guys see, like, Sydney kind of blanch a little bit, like, your ears kind of perk up, and you guys do hear the faint yelling. It's pretty loud. Can I do, like, an insight check on the yell? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I still cast locate object. Okay. Is that <laughs> the head anywhere? Uh, it's I wasn't a thousand kidding. Feet, right? It was a thousand feet, right? Yes. 
you do not get well let me let me ask you this how close is loki's temple to the sh- to the shore oh uh well i'm going to i'm going to go with my first instinct and say that it's probably not super duper close Probably, like, a 15-minute walk. You don't get a ping on locate object. What was that perception check, Satari? Uh, insight was 22. You also recognize Brahiri's voice when you tune into it. You know in your heart that it cannot be Brahiri because you saw her remains. And where is Pickles? Could I yeah, Pickles, could I guess guys, that this is maybe Pickles? You 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 it, yeah, as soon as as soon as you're as soon as Sydney's like, where's Pickles? Like <laughs> you're like, oh it's Pickles. And then you guys are kind of like putting two and two together that Pickles probably was around when Brahiri was dying. I run towards the sound. You run, you guys book it out of the basement and you guys uh, like go up the stairs and you uh, again find yourself in the temple that is now empty. The woman who was like washing the floors has left and the floors are still slightly damp and you guys hear the, the help, help and the screaming begin again and you guys run out into the garden and you see on top of one of the more ornate tombs is Pickles. And he is mimicking Rahiri's voice perfectly. The object that he's, I'm assuming, the object that he's on is like the mausoleum? Yeah. Is the door open? You notice that it is not locked, and it is slightly ajar. We still I'm have gonna... that plus ten stealth, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I'm going to... I'm gonna... I rush up, I'm gonna sneak... into the mausoleum. Wait before you go. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> Guidance that shit. And that's a D4? Yeah. yeah. With my plus 20. <laughs> uh, but, hey. I I love adding numbers. Uh, that's going to be a 32. Okay. Like again, Whoa. you guys, you guys like look at pickles, and then you guys look back, and Sydney is gone, and you're like, "How does she do that?" And uh, <laughs> the the gate like like just a little bit open, and Sid- as Sydney has run into the mausoleum. Do we follow after her? Yes, I don't think we should leave her alone. Can I put my arm up and like get Pickles to come with us? Sure. You uh you you call for him. Come on, Pickles. Pickles. Uh and I'm he I'm gonna give him like a strawberry like good boy. <laughs> he he immediately Good job stops, finding this. He stops screaming. <laughs> Again, <laughs> extremely distressing. It is like <laughs> it's it's oh. very, very accurate. And, uh, and he starts, like, choking down the strawberry, and he calmly rides on Zatari's shoulders. Uh, Zatari, his claws are very sharp, but, like, (laughs) he is gentle. Like, he doesn't dig in too hard. I probably have, like, a pretty plush, like, cloak, too. Yeah, yeah, you're (laughs) like, okay. Uh, you guys enter the mausoleum. Um, and it's, uh, it's quite old. Uh, and you guys see that it's it's basically the kind of mausoleum. I'll that's take the two by the hand again if it's dark. 
it's still like bright outside so like with the door open like some sunlight comes in (laughs) (laughs) um but it's kind of one of those that's like for a family (laughs) and like there's a bunch of like basically slots um for uh their remains Anyone missing? Um, where are you? I'm looking for like a secret door or anything that's shifted mm-hmm. that would indicate who's been there. <gasps> yeah, make an Could I do check. detect magic? You can also do a detect magic. Yeah. That's a 16. Okay. Mm-hmm. The magic. So I'll sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of me. I'll have that <laughs> um, And I s- I'll see a faint aura, and I learn the school of magic. If I'm... Okay. You and see... the spell can penetrate most barriers. Excellent. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's what I was wondering. Um, <laughs> you see yeah. that on the floor... There is just, and you have dark vision, so like you can kind of see a little bit better, but the sunlight just lights it up very, very, <laughs> like, just a few drops of like a brownish liquid on the ground. As you detect magic, a, uh, a aura of abjuration pops up on the far wall. There. Where? Something is funny with this wall. This wall has magic here. Can I try to like search around the like aura to see if there's like a button or something to push? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, make an investigation check. Oh, sorry. I found coagulated blood. Yes. Ooh. Right here. But the 19. Nice. You notice that the, like, dirt on the floor, that one, uh, as Sydney, like, points out on the floor, the, like, small drops of blood, that there is, like, a small area in front of it where there is no blood. And there, it, like, the dirt seems to be, like, smoother there. Like a door opened? Mm Mm-hmm. Can I also see if, like, any of, like, are all the tombs that are meant to be in here still in here? Yeah, it's, it, you, I mean, even with, like, you open the door a little bit more to let more sunlight in, and you immediately are like, okay, no, there's nothing has been disturbed in here besides this blood trail and the the floor. Emma, were you saying something? Did anyone Sorry. read what the what the family name is for this mausoleum? Hmm. Great question. Um. Yeah. The or... Smiths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the John Smiths. Oh. <laughs> I think I, um, I killed the smith once. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. Uh, yeah, you see that it's actually a dwarven uh, clan. Uh, it seems to be Amberhelm is the name. So they're like really short graves. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are we all, all for the muscle? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The muscle is kind grand. with like the, the muscle is grand. Okay. Dwarves have never done anything like subtle. Like, yeah, I mean, have you seen Lord of the Rings? I know, but like, <laughs> that's so true. High five, that's all. Number we picking? Did we go in order? No, I picked my birthday and then I picked today. Uh, Jet, uh, Sydney, uh, Sienna, can you see a way to open this 
secret door. I'm pretty sure it's right here. And I'm gonna like point out the outline of the aura that I see. Yeah, it's basically the whole far uh, wall. I have a crowbar. Maybe I can. Oh. Check. Would that work? <laughs> Maybe like, like a lever. You just yeah, see Sienna, we, like, like pull out a big ass crowbar, and you guys are like, "Whoa, whoa, hold on, whoa, who is that?" Yeah, can we start like just touching bricks and see if any of them like sure. <laughs> move at all? Or... Wand. You'd be like Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. Push on the wall, that. maybe see if the wall like moves at all. Hmm. I you begin to like touch all leopard. the different gravestones and eventually you do find one kind of like at like knee height that does go in slightly like when you push it and you guys get like really excited and then you're like nothing happens hmm Mm. Well, I am out of ideas. How about it, Sienna? Three, three I don't know how else we are getting through. I, I have to <laughs> remind you guys that you are all rogues. Like, <laughs> I there's that. no like keyhole anywhere. Or, like. The I'm detect magic know. doesn't show like any sort of. It just like... shows that it's abjuration. Is the wall? How oh, about? I don't I have the spell magic. Like a lantern, so I can get a better look at everything in detail. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, is there like any? I couldn't. Uh, Viciously mock the door, but I can't do much else. Do you cast a spell magic? I don't have this spell oh, magic. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'm not looking at you. I wish I did. I don't. I didn't change my spells today. I only have detect the magic. So yeah, you start like spelling. really examining the wall. Like your face is very close to it. I. <laughs> Like the mausoleum the bricks. itself <laughs> is it is it up against the oh, back? Oh, I have it. Of I do have it. Graveyard? I have no magic. <gasps> um, Sorry. Yeah, it's like it's kind or is of it like the center. It's kind of it's one of the larger mausoleums. Like I said, dwarves uh -huh. have never done anything like. Oh no, the like, of Moria make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, like. It, this is a it's a fairly big mausoleum there's a lot of amber helms um in here um and you uh you do find it interesting because the two walls on your left and right are like literally completely taken up by names and graves <laughs> but the back wall holds nothing <laughs> Uh, I dispel magic. <laughs> what level? Oh shit! Great question. Uh, three. <laughs> you dispel magic, and uh, Zatari, you see the abjuration disappear, and <gasps> Sienna, as you're like, basically your nose is like to the to the wall <laughs> and you uh you like lean on it a little bit and it starts to like turn i <sighs> kind of just pushed it <laughs> i don't think so i think we needed to dispel in order to unlock it yes it was magically magically locked <laughs> not cool. good job Gemma. good job sienna you found it right through I like. I would like to sneakily go through the door. As the stone like wall sort of like it's full Scooby Doo, like inverts on itself. You guys see. Yes. <laughs> you guys see that it pretty much it pretty sharply like dips down, and there's like stone and there's like dirt uh, stairs, 
And it is dark. It's dark down there. Um, I Does Gemma believe... still have her lantern? I was gonna say... I... Uh, yeah, you, you guys hold up the lantern. <laughs> it, light, it lights, you know, a couple okay. feet in front of you. I'll... I'll sneak ahead a little bit with Sydney. Like, yeah. I'll let Sydney go first, but I'll be, like, not too like far to behind sneak. her. I'd like to sneak downstairs. Okay. What's the uh, marching Those order are. here? Sydney's first. So, Sydney, Zatari, and then. Gemma, okay. do you want to go Sydney and Gemma, or Gemma? Sydney, Zatari. Um, I'll be last. Yeah. Look, it makes sense because Sienna's leading with the light. Yeah, and, and neither of us have. Uh, we can't see in the dark. Yeah, yeah. But I don't have a problem walking down here. I'm gonna so keep my crowbar. Sydney, out. Zatari, <laughs> Sienna. You and never Joe. know when you need a crowbar. Yep. Sydney has her bow out. Cool. All right, everyone. Are you? You guys are all doing this sneakily. I'm doing Sneaky. sneakily. Yes. Okay. Is Passive Trace gone by now? Is it's only 10 minutes, right? It's only 10 minutes. It it's an basically... Hour. Oh, is oh. it an hour? I thought Passive Trace was an hour. Okay, yeah. Pass within three. Without an hour. a trace. Oh, it's still up. Hell yeah! It's only hour. been like... Yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Sneaky sneak. Back into Go ahead and make me a stealth Pass check. Passive Trace is dope. It's a great spell. <gasps> Nat 20! Hey, For a total oh, oh, of 35. Oh, plus geez. 10. Add that plus 10, and okay. then you add that. 34. Okay. <laughs> okay. 23. Okay. 17. Okay. Plus 10? I rolled a 1. Huh. Oh, you rolled, you rolled that it at 1? one? Oh, yeah! What does oh, that mean? Well, bad. Zatari did roll a nat 20. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> you guys... They could cancel each other uh, out. Sienna's hooves... She turns around and goes... <laughs> Sienna's hooves make a ton of noise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, and, like, the lantern is, like... You're bang, a bang, bang, bang. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not great. If you I guys... got a net twenty, can I just like turn around and be like shh and like try to guide Sienna through without like trying to be more quiet? <laughs> totally. You guys make your way stealthily <laughs> down the stairs. And you uh <laughs> eventually like Pickles joins, like, goes from Zatari's shoulder to Sydney's shoulder, and, like... Yeah, as soon as I see Sydney, I'd probably, like, try to push him up and like, <laughs> have him go towards her. <laughs> right? Awesome. Like, Glenn, go to your owner. Um... You, uh... As, as, um... As he lands on Sydney's shoulders, like you can see Sydney kind of like body language is a little like <sighs> at at pickles. And you see him kind of like nuzzle her head a little bit. Yeah. And then he's like focused. Sid, Sid, Sid. Yeah. I was going to say, Sydney kind of glasses and then keeps going. <laughs> Slight acknowledgement. Slight acknowledgement. Every time. See, Every the time... player loves pickles. Sydney does not love pickles. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Whenever we collectively move, for some reason in my head, I hear the Powerpuff Girls do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Mine's the guitar for for like was it Buttercup? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you guys creep your way oh, down, <laughs> um, and you guys kind of at one point 
start like razzing Gemma a little bit because there's definitely catacombs down here. <laughs> <laughs> How did you not know this existed down here? My Gemma? face just died. Leave me alone. <laughs> You should really study up on your history more. I was busy flirting with Big Tony. What do you want from me? My <laughs> okay, okay. Died. All right, I will cut you some slack, but still. <laughs> I can't remember nothing useful right now. I'm still kind of in shock. Well, now we know secret tunnels exist under the temple. <laughs> secret tunnels. Okay, great. Sacred tunnel. You guys, <laughs> kind. You guys walk for a minute. You, you guys, you guys are like walking, like and it, and it's like stares for a long time. Like, are there any more blood drips? Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. Just Atari? If you, if whoever wants Gemma, to do you want to look for blood with me? <laughs> yeah. oh, I was looking for blood too. Oh, I feel like Gemma has the most. I'm, since I'm in the front, the I would be follow, I would be trying yeah, to follow yeah. the blood trail. Um, twenty-three. Okay. There we go. That's a nine. <laughs> nine. Atari <laughs> is. <laughs> Just too busy razzing Gemma to really notice anything. <laughs> Sydney, you're following, like, and, like, the blood drops are getting farther and farther in between each other. Right. And eventually they do stop. Right. But there's no, like, it's fully just, like, straight down. And there's no, like, turns or anything like that. It's just stairs right. down and down and down and down. And you're walking for, like, several minutes like 10 minutes turns into 20 minutes and you guys start being like damn we've been walking for a minute here um eventually you start to Hold on. like the air is very cold down here um Ooh. and the earth like is like kind of moist because of like how close you guys are to to the uh, water like it's it's kind of moistening up and uh Gemma you're... how far do you think we are down here so I was actually gonna ask that um earlier you said how close is the shore how close is the ocean to the mm -hmm. to the temple? Are we literally walking 15 minutes, like, underground toward the ocean? It's a little hard to tell, like, exactly what direction you guys have been going this whole time. It's a little disorienting. But, like, just based off, like, the smell of the earth, like, you would imagine you're at least walking towards, like, water. Um, when I cast Locate Object, did I at least get a ping in which direction my object went no i think it's only if it's in a thousand feet right yeah okay you guys are, i mean well, you, can, it, you can try yeah. and cast it again um but it is uh like you well, would we would have known gone. which direction we were going from yeah entering the mausoleum right like but if, if we're going down no in the spiral staircase at some point you're gonna get disoriented Going down the I thought she said yeah. there wasn't any turns, though. Yeah, there's no turns. It's just like straight down. It's and just straight like, down. But uh, like, yeah. it could have it could have taken you guys like, like you don't know if it was actually straight. It was just straight down from the mausoleum, and then it could have been like slightly turning the whole time. You're not a hundred percent sure. Could yeah. I? As a Earth Genasi. Okay, I'll oh. hear this. <laughs> what, type, what type of uh, terrain we are currently in? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Um, let me 
Let me look up what types of terrain there are. Love to mean... lick the dirt and figure that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, take a look. Grab a, a rock of, uh... and lick it. Yeah, you grab a rock and lick it. You, um... You're still... A little dirt like, hurt. I, yeah, everything, everything in Baldur's Gate is kind of considered the coast. So... You're still, you know, you're still, you're still by the coast. You don't, you think you are moving towards the ocean rather than towards the outer city. Um, you are a couple miles from the actual, like, coastline. So you don't think you're in danger of, like, finger. Okay, the last we're back. you heard was, the you're last you heard was, you said, you're, yeah. You're not in oh, danger of, dot, dot, dot. of, uh, <laughs> of like, being under the ocean or anything, or, like, reaching the shore or anything like that. So you're, like, a couple miles from that actuality. Um, just not under the you... water table yet. Yeah, just... To relay that info after licking the rock. <laughs> you guys all just look at Gemma for, like, licking the rock, like, okay. <laughs> what? Is How does that taste, hurt? Gemma? Huh? Does it taste salty? Salty-ish. Not bad. Gemma, oh. are you hungry? I have, I have some tarts. <laughs> no, girl. I'm made of earth, also. Do you eat the rocks? No, but like you know, something, something you learn as you grow up. Oh, when you're cultural made... thing? Okay. Yeah. When you're made of stone, you gotta learn... You gotta learn what what you can and can't be around, you know? Makes sense. Okay. Are there underground rivers in Baldur's Gate? Oh, uh, there's certainly a, a very elaborate sewer system. Oh. Interesting. Hmm. It doesn't taste like... It doesn't sewer, taste right? like sewer. <laughs> that would have been a nasty, nasty surprise on you. <laughs> surprise! Surprise! I'm willing to take If it can, and now I like rocks. You're like, so. it's, it's happened before. Um, <laughs> so, just at the point where you guys are like, Oh my god, we've been walking a long time. Like, we should maybe think about going back. Mm -hmm. Or like the, at the 45 minute mark, yeah. we'll pass without a trace. Sydney, you feel like a little bit of like airflow. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like with like with the air. It was sort of like a specific scent to it. Like does it smell like sea air or like ocean. You know, like do I get that kind of impression mm -hmm. at all? You just you oh, just yeah. get that like there is there is another way that leads out of this tunnel. Um. And it probably is like kind of like flowing through. It basically signals to you as a ranger that like, yeah, you are close to either a a different direction or a place where you can like leave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Guys, we should keep going. I feel some right. air. We've been going for a while. You don't think we should turn back? No. I feel some air. I feel fresh air. Okay. Oh. We'll follow air. you. <laughs> well. Yeah. Could have been pigeon pie, saying. but. Pigeon pie. Sydney's not gonna elaborate. She's just gonna keep going. Sydney's <laughs> just I'm like, I'm on business. Sydney's like, gonna be like, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep going. Coffee, pigeon pie. Sometimes it does that. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, you, like, with renewed vigor, you keep trudging along. And mm -hmm. in 
a, a, just a couple more minutes, you guys come to, like, the tunnel widens, like, quite a bit. You guys could really only go, like, in single file up until this part. It was pretty narrow. Almost claustrophobic, but not quite. And the tunnel starts widening a lot. And... You... Sydney, you begin to sense that there's, like, a large area in front of you. Okay. Can I still, like, am I still, like, sneaking down? Yeah, it hasn't been, like, you guys are, like, the Pass Without Trace is, like, just about to be up. Okay. You have, like, Ten more minutes on that pass without trace. Yeah, because I, as I get closer to it, I'd like to be a little bit more stealthy. I'm assuming at some point during that long walk down, I was like, "Dude, I'm not gonna be that stealthy." <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to sneak. It's more tiring. Yeah, you guys like kind of dropped yeah. off on the sneak for a little bit in in favor of uh, yeah. in in favor of quickness, obedience. Yeah. yeah, and. You guys slow like down to go a little back bit. To sneaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can always do it again if we um, feel like we need it. I don't have to burn a, a spell slot, just let's, so you know. Yeah, let's let's wait just a little bit longer since it's not quite up yet. As I'm you sneak down closer, closer to the area. Yep. Close out. As you get, as you like basically come upon the entrance, mm -hmm. you're, you sense like, it's huge. There's like a massive area under, like at the end of this tunnel. Um, like a vast cave almost. I don't know if you guys are like, I've been to those underground Kentucky caves. It's like kind of like that. Um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, uh, it's large. And you're like, this is bizarre. But you get a little hesitant. It's also so dark, except for the lantern that you guys have. I was going to say, can I see anything with my dark vision? You see that the that the cave is mostly like it's pretty empty. Like you you do hear and like see some shapes. Like the the rock is you know like carved out in different sections. But you mm -hmm. um you see you hear like a very small stream running through um. And you, uh, you don't see any, like, statues or objects or anything, really. You do yeah, see some, the, like, the large trail? dirt piles. No blood trail. That's kind of, like, petered off blood for, like, the done. past, like, mm. several minutes. You do see a couple, like, yeah. large dirt piles. Fresh? Fresh dirt piles? Uh, Sydney, with your dark vision, I mean, like, some of them look fresh? Some of them look fresher than others, I should say? Mm -hmm. Gemma, maybe you could do the locate the skull again. Or taste the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of my culture! <laughs> Things that I thought going on, okay? We don't pay you for eating nothing but sugar. I had pigeon this morning. That's protein. <laughs> and I'm just saying, if you try the dirt, I mean, you might know where it's from. If it's not from here. You should Can maybe I... try some vegetables as well. You know. Don't eat nothing but Nice, dirt. round, balanced diet, you know? She's talking to me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need a backpack. 
Yeah. <laughs> I go into my backpack and light it, light my torch that I have in my backpack. Totally. And get cast more light into the area. Yeah. Trying to be Gandalf without being Gandalf, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't have that powerful of light. I don't want to find a ball rug. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, you guys, like, again, full Scooby-Doo, like, pop your heads basically into just the beginning of the tunnel and try and, like, hold out your light source as, as far as you can. Besides the... <laughs> besides the, um... Mound. The, the mounds. Mm -hmm. Not seeing a ton. Um, I have an action called, and I don't know if it'll work because it's not very bright in here, but it's called Eye for Detail. Okay. I don't know if that applies here. Well, with with two torches, you could pro probably oh. see pretty well. Uh, so Eye for Detail, you can use a bonus action to make a perception check to spot a hidden creature or object. Oh. Or to make an investigation check to uncover or decipher clues. I know we're not in initiative order. Oh, okay. But could she use that skill just to like? Could she use that skill? Yeah, let me. I was gonna say I have more. another skill that I could also. I could use primeval awareness. Ooh, Sydney, do you see any tracks in the dirt? Yeah, I'll let you use this eye for detail. Okay. So what would you want to roll for? Would you want to roll a perception or an investigation? Hmm. Perception. I'll do pers- No. I don't know, what do you think? Can I- can I look for tracks? Can I look for footsteps and- I'll go for investigation. Right? Yeah. Investigation, investigation. Dope. Um, for me, that is a 23. Oh. Natural 19. I should have put this down. I should have put it down. I got a one. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so back and forth. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the no dark vision, with the no dark vision, damn, it's dark in here. Like, you really cannot see nothing. Um, rat, double rats. With the, with the 23. Uh, yeah, so looking for like footsteps or tracks or anything like that. I can just ask. What's you do see, like, in the dirt, kind of like leading towards mm -hmm. the like little stream. Uh, you do see that it uh, there's some footprints. They look pretty fresh. I follow the footprints. Does oh. it look like maybe someone took a boat? I I think we have to get closer to the stream to determine that. Yeah. So my my torch, you see this little ball of light just start moving farther away. <laughs> Sydney goes towards where the stream is. I guess we'll I'm fucking the dirt. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um <laughs> could I, as I'm following the footsteps, could I use primeval awareness? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me look at what that is. Um, as an action, you expend one Essentially, range of spell I slot expend a... to sense whether aberrations, yep. dragons, elements, fiends, or undead. Oh, you can absolutely do this. Ooh. In mile of me. Yep. Go okay. ahead. I will expend a spell slot to do primeval awareness. And I'm not in my favorite terrain, so it's not the six miles one, it's just a mile. So you said you heard footsteps, Sydney. Yeah, there's you just okay. You don't even have to. You don't even have to roll for it, right? No, I just know. Oh, okay. 
you make your you make your way to the stream and just for kicks you turn on primeval mm. awareness and you stop dead in your tracks yeah as undead flags oh snap do you guys follow fresh memories You you see the light stop moving from where Sydney was, and she just she just stops. Sydney, uh, did you find something? We've oh, got God. undead. Did you say undead? As undead. you guys as you guys start well, like panicking well. a little bit, you guys hear the earth shake. <gasps> and it gets, and it starts shaking so hard that you are worried about the tunnel and the cave collapsing. And all of a sudden, uh, a does move, the fresh earth move? The fresh earth moves, and a uh, massive uh, bullet comes leaping out of the earth uh, and lands uh, right in front of Sydney. And you see that he is a horrifying visage of like half rotten, like half bones. And he roars in your face. <laughs> to which Pickle oh, says, that, Kaka! He's a, he's a tic tacs. What he needs is a tic tac. Oh, can, you, can you explain what a bullet is? Yes, I can. I will give you guys a picture. Uh oh. He's a big boy. Uh oh. Is he like a giant? He's a large creature. Um, I'm trying to find an undead uh -oh. one for you guys. House? Okay, yeah, this is close enough. <laughs> I was gonna say how many feet. Close enough. He. He's a big uh, boy. Let me, yeah, let me look at his thing. He's ah! like. He's like within yeah. within five feet of you. What the? He's right in your face. Ah, Everybody, go he's ahead. He's like and roll a initiative. bug, <laughs> bug monster. Ah. What do I roll? Just a twenty. Oh, scroll. Nope. Scroll up. All right. So you'll roll your d twenty and you'll add that. 16. I got a 10. I got a 20. Oops. Woo! Okay, one second. That's um, just pulling up my counter. Okay. 14. 16 for Sienna? No, 20. No. Tw okay, 20 for Sienna. 16 for Zatari? Oh, wait, wait, not yeah. 20. I'm sorry. 22 for Sienna. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa! 16 for Zatari, and then who rolled a 10? Me. Sydney. Sydney. Great. Gemma. Gemma you rolled get? a fourteen. Okay. Fourteen. And our big boy. Let's see if he gets anything to initiative. He does not. Better not use my dice against. Me. I did. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there a battle map to look at? I do not have a battle map for you guys, unfortunately. I'm so okay. sorry. Uh, I That's didn't fine. know Here's what we were gonna do today. Imagination. It's dark in here. It's a big ass cave. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just turn on some battle music. Uh, I do need my battle music. I've had that since I was a kid. Is this yours? Yeah. I love it. I wish I never got rid of mine now. This is so nice. All right. Sienna, you see, you see, um, this massive creature, like, literally, like, fly, almost fly out of the ground and, like, take a large leap and just land, like, directly in front of Sydney, and his, and his tail is, like, wagging back and forth, and he, like, burps in her face, and no. you run, spring into action. What do you do? I'm gonna use, um, do I do like an, like an attack then? Well, hold on. How far away is she from Sydney? I would say probably 20 feet. 
You didn't go that far into the... Like, you weren't walking that long. No. Before so you turned on Primeval Awareness. It's away from them, unless you have something ranged, like... Mm -hmm. You'd have to. The river is probably, or like the stream river is probably like another 20 feet away from you. Behind? So something like attacker or something. I guess. So yeah. behind this creature. It's, uh, it's technically, I guess, if you are facing the creature, it's technically on your right. So 20 feet to your right. Okay. So you like went in, turned right. Walk 20 feet, it's 40 feet away, bullet comes pouncing out. Go. If we were facing the stream, its grave would have been like on the left of di a little bit of a distance away. So bullets, like, they burrow. So that's what all the fresh mounds were of hit. He's like oh. coming in and out. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, I think from this distance, I'll use a short bow. Okay. Because if I if I ram it, I don't want it to injure or something. We're really close to each other. That's fair. Mm -hmm. It's a big object. Okay, so I'm gonna use my you short do you. bow. You do you. You can do these things. I support whatever decision you decide to make. Yeah. Let's go roll your d20 and then you'll add six. She's using she's using her short bow. 17 plus 6. So that's 23. This is 23 hit? Yeah. If it doesn't hits. hit, I'd be very you're, concerned. You were like, you're like, no, <laughs> I'd be like, we are going to die. Yeah, it's a legendary creature right Whoa. here. <laughs> what? You guys are level 4, right? Yep. Like... <laughs> You'll roll. Level no, you guys are level five, five actually. Fine. You're fine. Mm -hmm. So five damage. That's it. Got legendary resistances. Yeah. Wait, sneak attack. Sneak attack. I'm within five feet. You're, yeah, you're within five feet. Oh. I'm within five feet. You should get sneak attack damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Add hey, some sneak you're attack. You're a rogue. That's the beauty so, of rogues. Sneak that damage. <laughs> yeah. So, four, three, six. <laughs> she eleven. So, eleven. Okay. Okay. Yay. You just see Sienna, So much like, better than just five. Jumps out. Short bows it. And it's just like a small arrow is now in the bullet's back. And it, you can see that it has like... The armor, the hide is very thick on this. Do you yeah. do anything else, Sienna? You can boat just, just letting you know, as a rogue, you can bonus action hide and then possibly get sneak attack damage, like, next round. Um, or you can, like, bonus action dash. Like, you have, you have options as a rogue. Yeah. Rogues are pretty dope when you play them correctly, as one of my players learned recently. <laughs> Not my like campaign. Him. Well, so Chris was in our in my Tuesday campaign. He played a swashbuckler rogue, but he was only doing ranged. He wasn't doing like melee. But that's the mm. point of swashbuckler. So swashbuckler. I know, but he chose Swashbuckler. So I was like, and yeah, it was How do I know you learned the hard oh. way. Because because Nick told me that, because he was like, I made this build so everyone else can be ranged. And I was like, great. <laughs> That's on. Okay, I'll bonus action hide. Okay. Hide behind you, like, something. Hide behind back him. into the tunnel. Zatara, you poke your head out and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> ah! Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> uh, I'm going to shoot it with my crossbow. Okay. You get sneak attack damage. Hang in there, Cindy! <laughs> okay, cool. That is 16 plus 7. I think probably hits. Um, 
So that would be 9 damage, and then with sneak attack, I'm also going to use a Bardic Inspiration to do Psychic Blades. Mm. Oh, cool. Oh, it's pretty good, bro. So... Um, that is another 14 damage. Okay, so it's 14 and what? And then... 14 and... Um, what did I... Uh, I'm just gonna roll it again because I don't remember. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, four plus four, eight. So fourteen plus eight. Okay. Not and then, shabby. as a bo as a bonus action. I'm going to look at Gemma and say, <laughs> You've got this, right? You know how to deal with dead things, I think. Yes? You'll do great. I believe in you. Come on, Gemma. Defeat the creepy dead frogman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to give you a bardic inspiration. <laughs> okay. Remind me what that is again. It's a. That is a D6. D6. So you can use it. Uh, you can add it to an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Okay. And you can add it after seeing the roll, but before knowing the outcome. Cool. Thank you. Uh huh. And then I'm just gonna like back away. <laughs> you back further into the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. That is the bullet's turn. Alright. He's gonna bite you, Sydney. Yep, yep, bring it. You are one lucky son of a bitch. He rolled a two. <gasps> uh, so a, n a nine does not hit, I'm assuming. No, nine does not hit. He's, he, he's like, not used to I'm imagining to he, he like, goes down and he, he hits dirt and tries to like, clench his yeah. jaw and Sydney's just like, well, this is disturbing. Yeah. Huh? And then it pulls back, yeah. <laughs> unable to. Pickles flies straight up, like, and he's like, goodbye. <laughs> um. See you. Uh, yeah. that was his turn. Um, so, Gemma, that's your turn. Go, Gemma, go, Gemma, go! Give me just one quick second. Okay. Shut the door. Oh, am I last in combat turn? Yes! Combat? You rolled four badly. <laughs> I did. I rolled a natural four. So, yes, mm, I did yeah. roll badly. Um, I think I look at Zatari and I'm like, you mean just me by myself? Oh my gods, okay, uh, uh... <laughs> Don't you have anything that can take care of dead things? Uh, I do, but I don't know if I have it. Oh no! You don't, okay. Um, so I'm gonna- Do you have anything that does I'm, radiant I don't know damage? <laughs> we'll see. Okay. I'm gonna bonus action spiritual weapon. <laughs> okay. You can do uh, up to 30 oh, feet, I believe, no. right? 60. Okay, cool. It pops up next to the bullet. Bonus action, spiritual weapon. I'm gonna do that at... Is that concentration? Level. It's not. Okay. I love Surprising. that about spiritual weapon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but as an action, I, I think as an action, I have to move it, right? You can move it as a bonus action when yeah, it's your next it, yeah. turn. Move, move yeah. it when it's a bonus action, yeah. Oh, that's okay, cool. Okay, so it's up. Um, It's slightly brighter in, in the cave, and you guys are like... What does it look like? It's fucking huge. You know, I knew you were going to ask that, and I, I haven't been excited <laughs> on what it's oh. like yet. We'll get there. <laughs> so... 
it'll come to me. Um, <laughs> up. And then, um, are we like equal distance away from, um, or Sydney's? Sydney. Like, because like the three of us, we were all together, you but then Sydney in walked the forward. Yeah, and Sydney, so Sydney and the bullet are 20 feet away. You, Gemma, okay. or sorry, you, you are Gemma. You, Sienna, and Zatari are like huddled in this tunnel. Okay. I am gonna use, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my movement, excuse me, and walk up, like, go closer, uh, and be, basically stand right next to, uh, uh, Sydney, and I yell out, uh, everything's gonna be okay! <laughs> you just gotta believe! Um, and, uh, I'm going to, uh, use my cantrip word of radiance um Ooh. toward the bullet okay uh let's see i think that would um, be more but i think that would be more sienna than gemma maybe huh she's like a girly <laughs> girl though i was I put in the chat, I'm imagining the spiritual weapon looking like a rolling pin. <laughs> and I think that'd be perfect for Sienna if Sienna had a spiritual <laughs> weapon. I just can imagine it being a rolling pin. More like... I just feel like Gemma's one of those ladies that would like hit a man over the head with a rolling pin. <laughs> That's <laughs> really good. <laughs> I wanted to be something cutesy like a makeup brush, but that's not very menacing, so I'll have to figure it out. A tube of lipstick. Just start from critical use the lollipop. I mean, girl, if a makeup brush m makes sense for you, you go for it. Yeah. It's a makeup brush. It looks like a makeup brush. Perfect. <laughs> Spiritual um, makeup brush. What's, what's terrifying about a lollipop? I mean, <laughs> it, it looks like a makeup brush, but it feels like a whip. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, so then I will cast Word of Radiance. Uh, you utter a divine word and burning radiance erupts from you. Um, you have to make a con save. Con save 15. Oh. Okay. Maybe? Possibly? Wow. He rolled a four. So, a nine does not save. Yeah! Um, okay, so how much damage does this do? Uh, it is 2d6. It just because he is vulnerable to radiant damage. Nice, it's at third Don't level, right? right again. No, that's a cantrip. She's using a cantrip. I'm using a cantrip, yeah. Because, oh, I thought because we were... spiritual weapon was a weapon spell. Is a weapon, is a... Oh, yeah. So then, do I still roll 2d6? Yeah, you roll 2d6 because vul because vulnerability means it's doubled. Like, your damage is doubled. Okay, well then, sweet. 11 radiant damage. Holla! You guys see that this undead bullet, like, light up and it gives, like, a huge roar. I turn around and I just thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> nice you see job, Gemma! Like poke out, just like thumbs up back, and Sydney's like <laughs> trembling with fear, but like kind of like gets herself together. <laughs> and it is your turn, <sighs> Sydney. All right. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark on it. Mm -hmm. Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark. You There's no that saving throw or anything. It just happens. That's yeah. a bonus action. Cool. Um, and instead of using my longbow, I pull out my dagger. Okay. I'm like, gonna stab this it. This is my melee weapon. Stab it up. Yeah. Stab. Do you get sneak, um, you get sneak attack feet? as well? Because uh, Gemma is within five feet of you now. Awesome. Uh, so 17 hits you are then. also a rogue, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, you yes, are. Yes, I am. So I get sneak attack and hunter's mark, which is another d6. Yep, yep. Sick, <laughs> sick. Yep. 
Yeah, happy move. Um, that's going to 12 damage. Okay. And because I'm a dread ambush busher, it's the first round of combat. I actually get to do another attack. Oh, I love that for you. <laughs> Ask so him let's up. Do that. Um, I'm assuming that a 19 hits. A 19 hits. Oh, that was 12 plus 4. I'm sorry, that was 16 damage because I forgot to add my plus 4. Um, and then I get a. Does Hunter's Mark, is that for every attack that I get? I believe attack? so. Whenever you hit with a weapon attack. Yep. yep. Awesome. Um, because with Dread Ambusher, I also get a D8 as well oh! for extra damage. Wow. Bloomstalkers, man. Bloomstalkers. They're fun. Um, so that's another... 16 points of damage. Wow. I did 32 damage my first round of combat. Um, yes, yes. Let's go. This this thing went from looking like real tanked up to it is bleeding. Like it's bloody. <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna stay right where I am. Yeah, okay. Not take that opportunity. I don't want attack. to attack opportunity. No. Although with how big it is, would I like if I were to take five feet back? Could she hide behind me? You're a halfling, right? I am a halfling. You can hide behind. And Jealous. I am a skulker. <sighs> I am a skulker as well, so I can hide very easily behind anything, really. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, Gemma is within five feet of you, so you don't le leave his range. Um, and you could easily hide behind Gemma. Okay, I'm gonna move so that I'm hiding behind Gemma. Okay, you are hiding. Because I can oh, share- yeah. I can occupy the same space as Gemma. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sienna, that is your turn. You see, you 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 guys go from like terrified, shaking in your boots, thinking you're gonna die, to like, oh, we got this team. We got. Th Look at us, Rogan and Ranger and Clarkin. Look at us. And Barden. <laughs> All the multi classes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll do the same thing. Same thing. Okay. So you again step out and prepare to short bow. Of 19 plus, plus 6. Mm -hmm. So 24. 24 to hit. hit. That absolutely hits. Great. And then the 1d6. But you're using your sneak attack, so then technically you're rolling 4. 4d6? Yeah. Whenever I want to Yes. My god, that's crazy. I love, I love the sneak attack as a rogue. 5, 6, 11. Plus. Okay. Um, plus three? Yeah. Fourteen. So fourteen? Fourteen! You can Fantastic. Help. Yeah. Alright. Hits again. Almost exactly where your other arrow hit. And you can see he's starting to, like, bleed, like, dark black blood. And he's like, the tail is really swishing now. Zatari, it is your turn. My turn. Okay, I'm going to shoot him with my crossbow again. Um, uh, fifteen. Doesn't hit. Dang it! I'm going to use. Can I use luck? You can use luck. I roll again. <laughs> That's a natural 20! <laughs> Love it! Well, in that case, I'm going to use Psychic Blades again. <laughs> so, let's see. That's a d8 and 3d6. So... Jesus. I'm gonna laugh if he dies and doesn't even get a hit on one of you guys. 16. <laughs> 
that would be very fun. 20. That's 20 points of damage. Wow. He's looking fucked up. Wow. Uh, and then... <laughs> and then... Um, I'm going to look at... Well, Gemma still has my inspiration from last time. So yeah, I haven't uh, used it yet. Correct. I she feel like we're it. going to kill him soon, so... I'm just gonna hang on to it for now in case we need it later. You've got this team! You're doing so well! I'm so <laughs> proud of all of you! Good job, sweetie! We're doing great! <laughs> <laughs> okay, because Sydney is hidden, he will now bite. Uh -huh. Oh, wait! Oh! I, um, didn't, I didn't double the dice. Oh, you didn't double the dice? Oh, shit. That was just. <laughs> no, so that. Will you, will you roll that other okay, double? Wait. I guess you have to roll again. <laughs> okay, so you took the twenty points of damage, so roll the roll the other half of that, I guess. Yeah. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, t another twelve <laughs> damage. He looks he, like he's like <laughs> he's like swaying a little bit, and kind of like in his like f blind, furious anger, he can't see Sydney anymore, so he's gonna bite Gemma. Gemma. That's but a why? dirty 20. I'm not. I'm not Gemma, tasty. Gemma, you take 30 points of piercing damage. Why? Oh, oh shit. shit. Damn. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> she bloody. You just hear Gemma? I'm okay. He also has the highest. She has the highest HP total of all of us. That is so true. She is our tank. Yeah. Um, I would like to know if there's more of a crunch because I am made of gemstone. <laughs> you guys hear like Does a very yeah, 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 yeah. You guys hear like a <laughs> and it's like a very it's like he's like chewing on rocks or something. Uh, Sydney, you are freaking the fuck out like behind Gemma, and you're like, Gemma, are you okay? And Gemma's like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everything's okay. We're okay. Don't worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> Gemma, that is your turn. Um, I like try to shake off what just happened. You're like, I'm good. <laughs> but I'm pissed. Uh, why didn't you even attack me? Where did it go? I just had something. Hold on. I need to look for it. <laughs> um, I'd like to use Channel Divinity Turn Undead. Okay. Um, so, um, I think this is my first time, like, using this. The verbiage is interesting. Putting it in the side chat. Let's see. As an action, you present your holy symbol and speak a prayer censoring the undead. Each undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet must make a wisdom saving throw, DC 15. If the creature fails um, the saving throw, it is turn for one minute or until it takes any damage a turn creature blah 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 okay okay what do you say to the creature um well you have to make you still have to make a whiz save what's this uh what's the number dc is 15. 15. you roll a 16. yeah um yeah. oh, the... yeah. Let's see, is there anything for half? He just burps no. in your face. No. <laughs> uh, again, tic tac. Tic tac. Tic god. That's okay. Or uh, the entire thing of tic tacs just based on size. <laughs> oh, retroactively also use my bonus action to move my spiritual weapon closer. Okay. He was already, um, like, pretty much on top of it, so. You you can attack with the spiritual, the spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon? Like. Yeah. 
Because you can move 60 feet. Yeah. He was only 20 feet in front of you. Okay, cool. So. I'm with the up, Raj. Kill him. You see, like. Kill him. Hit. It hits. You see the makeup brush, like, like it goes. It's like it, as it pops out, like a bunch of like beautiful purple, like swirly magic comes around, and you guys are like makeup brush, and it's like a big like floofy brush, <laughs> and then you and then it turns around, so it's like handle first to like hit. <laughs> ah, more sense. Eight. Eight damage. damage. How would you yeah. like to do this? <gasps> Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Gem is pissed because she probably thinks that like she's cracked somewhere, um, but not like a thousand percent sure. And then um, just uh, guides the spiritual weapon closer and is like, "Fuck you and your stinky breath!" and just like. <laughs> Bashes it on the top of the head. <laughs> Full cartoon boink yes. on the skull, and you hear you guys hear like a very yes. sickening skull crunch as the makeup brush slams down on this bullet, and you guys see it like do like a big like ooh, and it falls right over. Sydney and G and Gemma like kind of dart out of the way, and it is actually dead now. Good job, you, did you guys! Yeah! Only Gemma took before a hella my... beating. <laughs> I think That's... before my uh, spiritual weapon goes away, I like, I kiss it and I go, thank you! <laughs> <laughs> you guys see it like. Gemma, you... are you alright? What was that, huh? DM? Oh, I was gonna say you guys see like cartoonish purple hearts like come out around it, and then it <laughs> whisks away. Cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'll be fine. I could heal myself. Does anyone else need any healing, or is it just me? Just you. Just I think you. it's just you. We could take a little break if you need. I'm fine. I could sing a song for you. Sure, if you want. But only no, if we take a break, though. Oh. I can do a song of rest on a short, short rest. During a short rest, so we'd be sitting here for an hour. Yeah. I thought short rest was 30 minutes. Short rest is an hour. Am I mistaken? Short rest is an hour. Thank you, Critical Role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's one hour. Mm -hmm. Do we want a short rest? Absolutely. I'm, I'm okay. I wouldn't mind taking one, but I will leave it up to you. Whatever you guys want. Does anyone get anything on a short rest? I would get... I think Zatari does. Okay. Sydney does not. I only get my spells back on a long rest. Yeah, Sydney gets Jack, exactly. Where is oh, Song of Rest? I don't think I get... I don't think I get it back. Anything back. Not quite. Um, no! Song of Rest is in features. If you or any friendly creatures who can hear your performance regain hit points at the end of the short rest by spending one or more hit dice, each of those creatures regain an extra d6 hit point. Okay, so it's basically like you lose um, less hit dice. Healing if words. I had, if I had used it, Words of Terror would would come back, but I haven't used Words of Terror. I thought about using it on the stupid guy in the temple, but I <laughs> didn't need to. <laughs> and you guys... and Satari would get her um, bardic back. You guys would lose... Really? Uh... You're level 5? Yeah. Oh, wait, no. You're level 4 bardic. No, you're level 4 bardic. I forgot you're one rogue. Never yeah, one rogue. not quite yet. 
you guys have been like tailing like you're kind of trying to do the math in your head and like if you are tailing this person um who like you believe to have stolen the head ex- or if you guys like if you guys are in a rush it's away. more pertinent for Gemma to just like heal herself if you guys are not in a rush then you I like I said I'm okay going. with healing word myself I think we should keep going yeah Okay. I think the tracks were pretty fresh. Do we follow the river? Can I head towards? Can I try and find those tracks again? Mm-hmm. You like you kind of you take a moment to like reorient yourself, like re, you know your to- pick up your torch and you uh, you walk yep. over towards the the stream, which you notice that it does become a lot larger. And you notice that there is like uh, a mark in the sand, kind of signaling that someone may have pushed some kind of like boat or like raft into here to basically sail down. Do I see a extra boat or raft anywhere close by? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. It's pretty dark. I help. Okay. I I, I rolled a twenty three. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. I will not. I will not twenty. Bitch. I did not nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> one one day. I, I rolled know. an eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you look around and you see on the other side of the river that there is like a what you would describe as a glorified raft <laughs> like it looks fairly jank but you're like that could work we could, we could do that <laughs> is there a way for me to get to it you would have to cross the river uh it's like 10 feet across can i tell how deep i'm assuming not because it's pretty dark in here it's pretty dark in here it, you can, as can a halfling like would maybe be like, mm. Mm. can I Is stick a hand like, in and feel? Shoot an arrow to the boat with a rope tied on it, and then just pull like, it over. Yeah, I mean, do what? any of us have a grappling hook? Yeah, do you guys have a grappling hook? I guess is the question. I do not. Oh, I have one! Okay. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Zatari has everything. <laughs> Zatari was a very know. successful adventure for a long time. Um, yes. So Can't so go you, anywhere you, without you, a grappling hook. You have this, like, great Here, idea. Tiana, and you, use this. And Zatari's like, I have that! And just, like, you guys notice that Zatari's pack is, like, kind of stuffed and she's like pulling out a bunch of like random <laughs> shit and then she's like here it is and uh sienna go ahead and she's make got me like a mary poppins bag a strength a bag. check <laughs> to properly legit have like mary poppins bag yeah <laughs> strength so it's just yeah. Add the last five seven Seven. Oh. You do have your inspiration. Oh, shit. <gasps> oh, yeah. That's true. What does that do? That's um, a DM inspir- inspiration. Yeah, DM inspiration is advantage. So again. you get to roll again. Come on, buddy. 20? <gasps> Not 20. Not 20! Oh, Not 20! Yes. That was an amazing Hell use. yeah! Of DM inspiration. So you guys, that, you guys see Sienna amazing. like wind up, and she like oh, does like a 26. really sad twenty six. Does a really sad like click link, and then she like <laughs> sheepishly like pulls it back, and then like again r- full now full rodeo style, and just like whoosh, and perfect. <laughs> you guys see it just perfectly like attaches to the other side of the raft, and she's like very smugly starts pulling it towards you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job, Sienna! That was such a good throw! I am okay. now infinitely glad that I decided to not try to swim. 
<laughs> yeah. You, you notice, you notice, yeah. like, as, as the boat starts to, like, get pulled, like, across the river, you guys notice that it's not, like, a chill river. It's, it's, like, has a crazy undercurrent, and this is going to be reminiscent of, white like, water rapids. it's going to be what some whitewater raf rafting up in here, full, full C Cusco and, and, uh, Pacha. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Uh oh! I love it. As you guys well, begin to uh, get on the raft, that is where we are going to yep. end for the evening. We will pick up from there. Can Perfect. I have Thanks. my grappling hook back? <laughs> yeah. <they're... laughs> Thank you. You did such a good job. Pickles like eyes Yay. the raft like. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and just like just... <laughs> it'll be fine or a fly overhead doesn't yeah. matter which one he he immediately like starts like kind of flying around like I ain't get on that shit um alright I will now I totally... <laughs> go ahead go ahead Zimmy no that's like I was like I totally forgot to roll for pickles during combat. Oh. That's fine. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. I need to give him, like, that's beefier the stats. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I was able to put him into the Beast Companion part Ooh, okay. of D&D &D Beyond. Is that one? No, that's the one we just killed. No. <laughs> She's looking at more, um, uh, drawings of what the bullet the looks bullet. like. Yes, and exactly. They're a cute ones. They're